we'll see that Fred today has 11-15-2011 as the default date. That's one area where I definitely find uh, this to be useful. Because you can do this sort of thing with details views and grid views, but it gets to be confusing. It's much more straightforward doing it here because you have complete control. All right, The details view is kind of out of your hands, and how you default things, you have to sort of work with what attributes and functions are in that control. And it's not always straightforward. All right? Um, but if you have to default something to a value, you know, then it's pretty, pretty, uh, pretty nifty to be able to do it this way. So for your last assignment, all right, one of the things you have to do or, is create a maintenance record for the car that you're viewing. Which means what? Which means that you shouldn't have to choose that car again from a drop-down. You should simply use the ID of whatever car you're looking at in the insert statement. So if you're adding a new maintenance record, you shouldn't even have to see the car. You already have the ID behind the scenes, and you can insert it using this sort of approach to insert into your service table or service history table a maintenance record for this car. All right. Okay. Um, that is uh, it on this one. I, I just want to, again, take one last look at this and see if there's any questions. All I'm doing here is I'm programmatically creating those statements that um, are going to be used. And those objects that are going to be used in the updating. So I'm creating my data source. I'm connecting to it. I'm creating my insert command. I'm creating the parameters. And then I'm giving it a shot. Are we already connected to the connection stream? What do you mean? Uh, in our database, our program that we're working on, we've already connected. And do we have to define it again? Like on the default page and on the... Uh, well, keep in mind that, that that connection, the question is, do I have to define it again? And, and yeah, you do, right? On every page, you have to create a SQL data source. And you have to say what connection string you're going to use. Here we're doing the exact same thing, except we're not you doing it through the, the code editor. We're doing it actually in our code. Keep in mind that there's no persistent connection to the database, like there is in a desktop application. Every request is a standalone request. So, for example, if I go to this page, set it as my start page, and run this, and I didn't want that page, if I set this page as my start page, I'm connected to the database to pull up this grid. I'm no longer, there's no sort of persistent connection. It uses it, it, uses it yeah. Now I click on this, that old connection's gone. I have to establish another connection to populate that drop down. That connection's gone. I go and enter someone in and click add. All right. When I click add, it creates a connection, does its thing, inserts it, then that connection's gone again. All right. Um, that is, uh, again, one of, the, one of the tricky parts of web application, again, is the fact that there's no persistence. Uh, other than a few features built into the server, like session variables, and we'll, we'll talk about those. But really, each request is a standalone request, and there's no real persistent connection to the database. All right. So to answer your question, yeah, you, you have to you have to create the connection again. The only difference between this and what we did with the details view, though, is the fact that we are manually through our code creating those objects as opposed to dragging them and popping them on our page. All right. That's good because that gives us more control over those. We can control that that connection or that uh, that that uh, uh, data source only exists.
exists when we need it, as opposed to if we did a details view and went to it, that, that would exist the whole time, that, that uh, data source object. All right. I will go unlock the lab. Uh, I will then go and um, come back here, grab the example, grab the videos, be back over in lab in a few minutes. I will try to remember to post the Visual Studio Makes You Stupid article because it's a lot of fun to read. All right, we'll see you over in lab.